My name is Doug Kaiser. I teach and research in the areas of products liability, consumer protection, environmental law, and animal law. Broadly speaking, you could say that I study the way in which societies try to use laws and regulations to predict, prevent, and manage risks of harm to life. Increasingly, I study the law and policy of climate change because climate change will pose unimaginable levels of harm to life. I think the biggest question that we face and that connects a number of the great challenges facing the planet, facing humanity, facing the non-human world, is how to overcome the dogmas of the Enlightenment that in three short centuries have enabled a mode and a scale of human existence that, that threatens the survivability of life on the planet. So there's this suite of isms from the Enlightenment that are our inheritance, liberalism and individualism and humanism and materialism and reductionism and rationalism and capitalism, this sort of spasm of isms that have undoubtedly improved well-being in enormous ways, but have also simultaneously enabled uh, an utterly unsustainable relationship to the natural world. So how do we salvage what's good and worthy in that spasm of isms while at the same time moving beyond them and into a different kind of set of ideological foundations that, that allow us to kind of live more softly and sustainably? I recently read uh, Timothy Pacharat's book, Every 12 Seconds, and it's had a deep impact on my thinking. It is a startlingly uh, engaged and informed description of the inner workings of a contemporary slaughterhouse. And it's, it's just such a vivid rendering of the way in which systems can become destructive, unfathomably destructive, without any of the conventional notions of action, guilt, and responsibility that we use in our moral and legal codes for trying to address the infliction of harm. And it's a haunting notion, but I think it's an incredibly important one to grapple with. A lot of my colleagues at Yale in our criminal justice program are focused on the massive lack of empathy throughout the incarceral state. And I feel like we're at a social moment where that issue is becoming something that exceeds tribal political boundaries, that people are recognizing that we've been hasty and unthinking in our casual abandonment of life. And I was struck by the way in which two of our colleagues this weekend, Timothy and Justin Marceau, both are engaged in current research that's focused on the entangling of that kind of incarceral state, incarceral drive with the animal protection movement and the kind of um, casual or unintended way in which the kind of punitive moralizing that lies behind the incarceral state can be deployed by animal protection organizations in, in order to, at least nominally, improve the legal status of victims of animal abuse. I think there's a profound possibility for linkages there with social movements that would, would far, far expand the traditional scope of the animal protection movement. And it, you know, it's the beginning of a recognition of the sacredness of all life and the ways in which these systems that we're creating, again, quite removed from individual agency, uh, the systems are, well, they're indefensible. I think there's a very important set of questions around what I might call law in an age of decline. I think that 
Much of modern legality is built around a presumed narrative of progress, a presumed notion that the arc of time bends toward justice, that economic growth and innovation will continue apace, that respect for rights and the spread of rule of law will continue to promote peace and security, and that there's a kind of in inexorable progressive tilt toward history. And that notion, I think, is based on a very, very tiny and recent slice of human history in the scheme of our hundreds of thousands of years on this planet. And I think all of our legal institutions, our, our, our doctrines, our policies, our procedures, they're built around that presumption. And I hope that those trends do continue but I think it's worthwhile having a plan B research agenda that deliberately asked what kinds of laws, what kinds of rights, what kinds of institutions should we have in a time where we can't expect economic growth, where we can expect massive, insurmountable threats to human well-being, let alone the non-human world. Uh, it's better, I think, to start grappling with those questions um, as a sort of fail-safe, one hopes. <laughs>